Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Again, we are in our Gematria series, and we've moved around a bit, and uh, today, we're trying to, I'm trying to work in a certain order of numbers. We are up to the number 22. Not the letter 22, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet is a tough. We're going to deal with the number 22. The number 22 is Chaf Bet, or Chaf Beis, depending on which way you pronounce it and is very relevant in Judaism. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And again, they are called the Aleph Beis. And they are the raw material of creation. They constitute the elementary building blocks of existence. Nothing, I repeat, nothing exists that is not represented by these letters. They are the tools by which God Almighty created this world and by which mankind communicates and continue God's work in creation. The countless combinations of letters and their orders reflect cosmic spiritual forces. According to Rabbeinu Bachya, everything in the universe was created through combinations of spiritual forces that are depicted by the 22 letters. They constitute not only the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, but also the numbers. The Hebrew alphabet is compared, so to speak, to the DNA of existence. Everything that God create, had determined had to be said and was inscribed in the Torah to function as the blueprint of creation. In Psalm 119 in Tehillim, there are 176 verses and they are divided into 22 parts. Each part, chapter so to speak, consisting of eight verses of one of the Hebrew letters from the alphabet from Aleph to Tuf. So eight times 22 176. Traditionally, there are 26 verses in Tanakh that have 22 verses. The first verse in the book of Devarim, the last book of the five books of the Torah, has 22 letters, which is an allusion to the 22 cups that were formed on the golden menorah that was made for the Mishkan. Again, that was made either by Betzal or some say again that Moshe Rabbeinu just found it had to be made out of one block of gold that God, Moshe just threw it into the fire and God had it came out with all of its ornaments. There were 22 generations from Adam, first man, to Abramavinu, Abraham our father. Achav uh, ruled as, as the king of Israel for 22 years as in Yerub ben Nevat who took the 10 nations and began what was called the Malchus Yisro the king, kingship of Israel versus that of Yehuda. A mezuzah is written on parchment with 22 lines. The number 22 can be found 13 times in the Torah. When the tribe of Levi was exchanged for the firstborn, there after the sin of the eagle of the golden calf, there were 22,000 Levites who were not firstborn. When the Jewish nation entered the land of Canaan, the tribe of Shimon, number 22,000, again, which was a kindness to the tribe. As we'll see, the 22,000 becomes a major number. There are certain specific numbers that draw down a divinity of God. The Shekhinah, again, a divinity, is in very special ways, such as the number 10 for a minyan, a quorum, or 600,000 for the Jewish nation to be able to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai. Interesting enough, a minyan is from the age of 13 up, and the bringing the divinity gone is from the age of 20 to 60 at the Mount Sinai, not from 13. When God came down to Mount Sinai to give the Jews the Torah, he was accompanied by a retinue of 22,000 angels, another significant number. This may have been the reason why no tribe in the desert had less than 22,000 men. In fact, it's interesting that the tribe of Shimon originally was 59,700. And after the sin of Shittim, when they entered the land of Israel, they were only 22,000. God in his kindness made sure they had at least that 22,000 so that the divinity of God could rest on them in that state. Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov our father, was separated from his father for 22 years when he went to Lovon's house to get married. He was then separated from his son, Yosef. Again, Mida Kanega Mida, tit for tat, for 22 years, when Yosef was sold by his brothers to Egypt. He did not have an audience with the Shekhinah, Yaakov, for those 22 years, since he was in a state of mourning. 
And the divinity of God does not rest on one who is sad. Another instance of the Shekhinah, the divinity of God departing for 22 years, occurred after the episode of Dovon HaMelech and Bathsheba. Distraught at the painful absence of the Shekhinah, Dovon HaMelech spent 22 years in mourning, eating dry bread and drinking the water of his tears daily. There are those who refer to the period from the 17th of Tammuz and lasting and including the 9th of Av as the 22 period of Bain Hamatsarim between the Straits, also referred to as the Three Weeks. Many calamities have befallen the Jewish nation during this period in time. May God protect us. Conversely, there is a corresponding period to make amends for these 22 days of destruction during the Bain Hamatsarim. And they are the 22 days beginning with Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, the first of Tishrei, and culminating on Shemini Atzeris, the 22nd day of Tishrei. Again, what many people may refer to as the end of Sukkot, which symbolize a time of recreation that taps into the 22 Hebrew letters as the building blocks of creation. In the morning blessings of the Shema, the prayer, Kel Baruch Godol, Again, Kel being the name's God, which is, we switch with the Kof instead of an Aleph, and follows the alphabetical order, and does, as does the prayer we say in our homes every Friday night to our wives, written by Shlomo Melch, Eishas Chayel, a valiant woman. Rav Chaim Belozhin states that the 22 letters of the Torah in Vidoy, in the Confession, are intended to arouse the heavenly root of the soul that is tied up and dependent upon Torah in order to cleanse and sanctify the soul. This prayer states specific sins that we may have transgressed as individuals and as a nation. Now, when we, when we are reciting this prayer, what we do is we hit our chest with each word, Hashamnu, Boganu, Gazalnu. We also have in mind that we're repenting from all sins. Not everybody knows the translation to the words or understands them. So what we do is we have in mind that we're sinning and repenting from all sins that begin with an aleph, all sins that begin with the bays, all sins that begin with the gimel. So this way a person is able to connect to all the sins that he may have transgressed. And again, this prayer is said in the plural. We are one body as a nation. So if your toe hurts, your body hurts. So if one person sins, that's still the nation that has sinned, the whole body. And we also have to be a part of that. There are many prayers on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and other festivals that follow the alphabetical order. Again, much like the al Khaits on Yom Kippur. They are used to denote the comprehensive glorification of God. In the Hoshanas, recited on Sukkot and on Hoshana Rabbah, the 22 letters encompass all manner of divine salvation. Any deviation from the alphabetical sequence automatically means that something is amiss. And there is something for us to learn from the omission, such as in the Ashrei, the Psalm 145, where the Nun is omitted since it alludes to a descent, something negative. In all but the concluding chapter in the book of Echa, Lamentations, the verses are arranged in alphabetical order. Due to the Jews violating the Torah composed of the 22 letters, their retribution of destruction and exile was recorded using all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. May God Almighty open our hearts and our minds to be able to use these 22 letters of his alphabet to help usher in the period of Mashiach Zekenu quickly and in our time. I want to thank you very much for coming. God bless. Be well and have a good Shabbos.